Dude, are you playing with your deck again? Yeah, of course. I love playing with my deck. What's it to you? I don't know. I just feel like you're pl playing with your deck all day lately. That's just, that's too much playing with your deck. <laughs> what do you care how much I play with my deck? It doesn't feel healthy, I guess. I, I mean, maybe you should go into the real world and make some friends or talk to girls or something instead of sitting around playing with your deck all day, you know? Yeah, yeah I think I do. And, and you're right. My hands are sore from playing with my deck so much anyways. I'm going to go make some friends and, and be active. Thanks, buddy. Anytime. Oh, dude, don't touch my deck. Hello, hi there, I'm TechTweeb, welcome, thanks for clicking on the video today. Man, it feels like forever since I've done a good old Steam Deck video. It hasn't been forever, but it's been a few weeks, which might as well be forever in YouTube land. And I miss it, I miss talking about my deck. I've reviewed so many retro handhelds, I've done a bunch of retro gaming content, some really cool things, some of the coolest things on YouTube if I'm being honest with myself, but the Steam Deck is one of my favorite devices and I play on it all the time and I just haven't been talking about it enough. But in some ways it's, it's good that I haven't talked about it much because I have a lot to tell you because uh, I've been collecting tips. As I use the deck, every time I want to know how to do something or feel like there's some way to optimize something, maybe I'll tinker, maybe I'll look it up. But every time I figure something out, I add that nugget of juicy golden info to a document that I've been keeping on all my favorite Steam Deck tips and tricks that I've learned. And now that document is packed full of the best is best dweeb approved Steam Deck tips and tricks that your puny brain can handle. Which is good because I'm going to tell them all to you today. I spoil you. You know that? Some of these tips and tricks are basic things, you know, things that maybe some of you are well aware of, but some of them are pretty obscure. So I'm going to challenge you to watch the whole video. And if there's a tip or trick that you didn't know about, then you got to leave a comment to tell me. And if you have any tips or tricks of your own that I didn't mention, pretty please leave them in the comments. I'd love for the comment section of this video to be like a second helping of amazing Steam Deck tips and tricks for the decky dweebs out there. So without further lollygagging, as my mob would say, let's take a look at my top like 20 or 30 or whatever Steam Deck tips and tricks, shall we? So uh, my first tip is probably pretty well known, but you can open up the keyboard anywhere in Steam by pressing Steam and X at the same time. You can bring up a mouse cursor at any time by holding the Steam button and putting your thumb on the right trackpad. Sometimes it's easier just to click on the thing you want rather than trying to fight with the joystick, you know? Yeah, you know. If you forget this or any of your shortcuts, you can hold down the Steam button at any time to get a helpful list of shortcuts. This is great for us forgetful dweebs that forget to remember how to bring up our screen magnifier or change the brightness or take screenshots. And the three dot menu on the right side can also be used in the exact same way as the Steam button on the left for shortcut keys. So those awkward shortcuts on the left side of the device like changing your brightness don't require you to pull a muscle while you can tort your hand to pull it off. If you haven't ventured into the uh, controller settings and changed your joystick dead zones, do it right now. They are set way too high by default. Set them to about like 3000 and then raise them up as much as you need if you have any stick drift. 3000 should be perfect though. They'll feel a lot more responsive than the default. If you're fighting with the controls of a game, don't stick with the default control layout. There's a good chance that someone from the community has come up with something better. So try a custom layout. To do this while you're in a game, press the Steam button, go to controller settings, and then controller settings again at the bottom, and then select your current layout. And now you can browse through other layouts, including the community layouts. This is especially useful for PC games that aren't meant to be played with controllers, as often the community has come up with useful controller presets that make use of extra input features that the deck has. Joysticks can have a command added to the outer zone, which means that when your joystick extends all the way and like touches the edge of the joystick area, it can do something. You can set this to something like the sprint button so that your character will automatically run when the joystick is right at the edge of the movement. Or you can set this to like dodge or even jump or something like that. If a game doesn't have the controls you like and you think you can do it better, feel free to make your own layout using the controller settings. 
And if you think your layout is the bestest layout, go ahead and click the cog button here and share it with the community. Give it an awesome name and description so that people know it's the best. One nice trick that helped me quite a bit was to edit the desktop mode controller config and set the back triggers to be a mouse click. This helps a lot because I hate it when I'm trying to click by by tapping the trackpad and I keep accidentally moving the, the cursor around. This definitely helps for clicking tiny buttons and stuff like uh, in, in like a web browser or whatever. If you have a gaming PC, using the deck to stream your PC games is pretty much the most perfect one-to-one -one Steam streaming experience that you could ever have. The controls are perfect, Steam has perfect compatibility between the deck and your PC, the latency is amazing, it feels like you're playing it on your deck, and your deck will barely be touching its battery while playing like this. It's, it's so good, you guys. You need to try this if you haven't. If a game that you're interested in is unverified or even unsupported, that doesn't mean that it won't run. Some games run totally fine. They're just like not in the database properly, or maybe they need like some sort of a workaround. I recommend just installing stuff and trying it, but you can always check out the website ProtonDB to see what other users are saying about any game. Lots of people know about this and I knew about it, but I wasn't impressed by the idea of it until I actually tried it. And then I was like, oh, this is awesome. You can install the Heroic Launcher to run games from other stores. You can find it in the Discover Software Center. So run that, log into your Epic or GOG uh, account, and then you can install those games on your deck. And you can use this shortcut here to add the game to your Steam library. And then you could just run the games from uh, Steam and it, it's as if they're installed through Steam. Oh, this is an important one. If you don't have enough Steam Deck tips and tricks or dumb cat jokes in your life, subscribe to TechDweeb. It costs you nothing and you might learn something sometimes. Eh, probably not though. All right, this is actually a big one. If you like to tinker with desktop mode on your Steam Deck, but you're annoyed that you have to connect up a mouse or keyboard or monitor, and you would love to be able to tinker from the comfort of your normal desktop PC, you can install the Steam Link PC app on your PC to be able to remotely control your Steam Deck from your PC. There's a link to the Steam Link Windows app in the doodad below. Install that on your PC and you can connect to your Steam Deck and use your PC's mouse and keyboard and monitor to tinker on your deck wirelessly. You can even create a shortcut in Windows and add this to the launch path to get it to run in a windowed mode. Easy desktop mode tinkering. Gotta love that. And if you're getting annoyed that you're constantly going back and forth between desktop mode and SteamOS, you can actually run desktop mode from within SteamOS without needing to reboot. You just need to set it up. So just go into desktop mode and use the search menu to find nested desktop. Add this to Steam, and then when you're in SteamOS, you can use this to instantly launch the desktop mode as if it's a game. You can do everything in here except launch Steam itself, since Steam is already running. But go ahead, download apps or manage your files or whatever. It's the same as the desktop mode in every other way. One of my favorite deck accessories is this thing. Deckmate. It adds a mounting bracket to the back of the deck and you can attach a kickstand or a wall mount or a battery bank or anything really. They even have a smoky black transparent version for the limited edition deck. I love this thing. I'm not going to go deep on the accessories. I made a whole video about Steam Deck accessories. I'll, I'll toss a link in the doodad below, but I'll just say that my charger is this AOHI Slim Charger that I love because it's slim and portable. And my controller is this 8-bit dough limited edition controller uh, because it matches my Steam Deck, obviously. And I keep all this stuff in the TomTalk Sling Deck bag, which is perfect for traveling. And this is my little Ugreen USB-C portable dock thing. Speaking of traveling, if you want to save yourself some headache if you'll be away from Wi-Fi like on a plane or whatever, make sure that you set your Steam Deck to offline mode before you leave your house while you still have internet. This way you won't run into Steam authentication issues while you're ootin' a boot. This also helps with battery life, by the way. And of course, if you're away from Wi-Fi, you can uh, tether your Steam Deck to your phone. 
but uh, on desktop mode, you can set it as a metered connection and then just leave it connected. It won't use up your data with downloads and updates, but it'll still let you access DRM servers while you're on the road. There are lots of things that you can do to adjust the performance and the battery usage of the deck, but first you'll want to see the performance that you're getting. You can enable the performance overlay by pressing the three dots menu and going down to the performance settings and changing the performance overlay level. Here you'll be able to see all sorts of different stats that can give you ideas of how to tweak the performance. A good default for getting the best performance to battery ratio is enabling the TDP limit and setting it to 8 watts. The vast majority of stuff that the deck will play will play great at 8 watts and it won't use up all your battery juice as quickly. However, some games need more wattage and some games need less. So be sure to enable a per game profile in any game that you want to customize the settings for. There is a great video by Deckverse that explains what he calls the golden 40 rule, which means that you'll get amazing battery life, but also great frame pacing when you set your deck to 40 FPS. You could set this to 45 FPS on the OLED deck. It's easy to do. You just set your deck's frame rate limit to 40 Hertz in the performance settings and enable VSync in game and enjoy nice, smooth frame pacing that feels closer to 60 FPS in most games. Don't forget to raise the graphics settings or lower the TDP since your deck won't have to work as hard to achieve high frame rates. I, I highly suggest you watch the video linked in the doodad below if you want to learn more about this. It's a, it's a real, really good video. If a game that you're running has a very high CPU usage compared to your GPU usage, which you can see in the performance overlay, you can enable manual GPU clock control and turn down the GPU speed to give the CPU more power to work with. It may take some fiddling to find the right setting, but just keep an eye on your frame rate and you should find a sweet spot. Somewhere around 900 megahertz is good for most graphically demanding games, but you might need to go up or down. Just start at 900 and try some stuff out. If you play a game, especially if it's unverified, and then you get some weird behavior like graphics glitches or if your controller isn't working, try changing the Proton compatibility mode by opening the game info screen, clicking the gear, go down to properties, compatibility, put a check in the compatibility toolbox, and then you can change the Proton version. Try the first one, and if that doesn't work, try the next one. <laughs> work your way down the list, and there's a good chance that one of them will work for you. I have a whole bunch of games that, that didn't work at first, and I eventually found a Proton version that let them play fine. I always hate it when I have to go hunting for my screenshots. So I was delighted when I learned that you could change the screenshots folder. In desktop mode, just go to settings, in game, and change the screenshot folder to your pictures folder. There you go. And no more digging through system files to find those screenshots that you saved for reasons. If you want to download a bunch of games on your deck and leave it downloading, obviously you don't want the screen to be left on, especially the, the OLED deck. Valve doesn't give us the option to turn off the screen when we're downloading games, so one thing that you can do if you have a dock or even a USB-C to HDMI dongle, you can plug that in, but don't connect it to a display. The, the deck will think that it has a display connected, turn off the internal screen, but it'll still be on and downloading your games. Just uh, don't forget to uh, turn it off after a while. And finally, stop huffing the exhaust fumes. I know it smells like a blockbuster video and reminds you of being a kid, but those fumes are addictive, man. You don't want to be on the wrong end of an intervention. Trust me, I know. And that's it. That's the Steam Deck tips and tricks that I've discovered and I thought that you might want to hear. I'm 93% sure that there was at least one that you didn't know about, so you should probably click the thumbs up button. And let us know some of your own personal Steam Deck tips and tricks. I'm, I'm sure the other decky dweebs would love to hear them. Check the doodad below for a link to a Tech Dweeb Binge playlist if you want to watch more of my videos. That's a fun way to spend a Saturday instead of leaving the house and talking to pretty girls or boys. And that's it from me. I'm Tech Dweeb freaking stop huffing those vent fumes. I already told you. Just stop it. Stop it now. Uh, bye bye.